What do we got here in the challenges? What do we what do we got right now? We've got a trivia challenge here. Five bucks per right answer. And it looks like it's a film and TV thing. Multiple choice. Hmm. So that's interesting. I like it. I'm All like right. Trivia. Let's uh let's let's rock this out. Okay. Um question number one. How many actors have been paid to play James Bond in an officially licensed 007 film released in theaters? Is it either, is it six, Very specific. seven, nine, or 12? Okay, well, I, can I just I count them out of my head? You can, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The cogs are turning. I can hear them from here. Exactly. I can see the smoke starting. Oh no. <laughs> Don't let the smoke out. I'm yeah. thinking nine. That was my guess too. Great. Now, does paid, like, is that a key word to this? I feel like this? that's the key word to this. Like, how many of them were actually paid? Were some I'm of them not? I'm assuming all of them. What would hope? Can you read the paid is section it, is again, it, James? Is it, is it nine? Uh, which, what, you want to go with nine? Yeah, yeah, let's just go with nine. Sure, sure. let's just go with nine. You're correct. It's nine. Heck yeah! yeah. So, here, it, every one of these has a fun fact. So, Sean Connery, George Lazenby, Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton, Pierce Brosnan, Daniel Craig, with special guest David Niven, uh, which yep. was in Casino Royale in 1967. John Gavin signed after Lazenby left, but Sean Connery decided to return. So, I guess mm. he was paid. And David Warbeck who was under contract to play Bond in case Moore decided to leave when his contract was up, but Moore kept returning to the role. So it looks like there were a couple a couple guys here who uh, signed on and theoretically got paid, but never actually played them. Uh-huh. Which is, I, which I is want a- to cause some discord here. Um, Kate, which one's your favorite Bond? <laughs> oh, Sean, of course. <laughs> and then if I had to pick a Bond movie that I've seen the most amount of times, without a shadow of a doubt, because of Odd Job, it would be Goldfinger. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows who Odd Job is? Yep. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's a- every the, single person in this room. He's Excellent. the lead from um, Everything Everywhere All at Once, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah all right. Traditionally, going over your head is not Odd Job's thing. Yeah. No, he no, goes he goes a little, a little lower. lower. Yeah. Yeah, he aims a bit lower. Yeah. With his hat. Yeah. That, that yeah. joke would make a lot more sense if you knew we were talking about. Yeah, that would land so well Chat's gonna if love you it. only got okay, it. Chat's yeah. going to love that. No, I, I'll believe the you. The joke goes over your head. The odd job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, not so much. Yeah. Uh, okay. He's a, a little, a, I'll a tell small you child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a guy with a hat. Like a metal rim on it. Uh, not just the people, Ash, and he threw it in the bars once. Remember, it got stuck in the bars? <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> All right. I may really like That's that. five bucks. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> Which Muppets, like Muppet or thing. Muppets, existed prior to the pilot episode, yeah, The yeah. Muppet Show, Sex and Violence? Statler and Waldorf, Sam the Eagle, The Swedish Chef, or Ralph the Dog? I might have missed the question. Which Muppet or Muppets existed prior to the pilot episode, The Muppet Show, Sex and Violence? A remi- uh, just if you didn't know, The Muppets, uh, definitely not always necessarily a kid's thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of where the direction they took. Not really how they started. Today I learned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, which one do you think existed before that pilot episode? Stadler and what's the Waldorf? Waldorf? Yeah. That'd be my guess. I don't yeah, really know the I Muppets, say that too. Because they're old? Yeah. Do you know what Stadler and Waldorf even yeah. is? Yeah! H-Felt. 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 Are you going to go Stadler and Waldorf? I mean, sure. All right. Yeah. That is incorrect. Boo. It's Ralph Heck the yeah. Dog. Other Muppets wow. that first debuted in Jim Henson's The Muppets are not just for kids. I promise Pilot included the entire Muppet Show house band, which is Animal, Dr. Teeth, Floyd Pepper, and Janice. Nigel, who later became the orchestra conductor. Muppets of George Washington, Theodore Roosevelt, Thomas Jefferson, and Abraham Lincoln, as there, were, there was uh-huh. a bit that included Mount Rushmore. Mm. And Muppets for each of the seven deadly sins. Oh. The Muppets were weird. Uh, yeah. But they're great. So, all right, got that one wrong. Uh, next uh, up, 
Which Santa baby singer enjoyed an additional career in the early 2000s in film and TV? Was it Eartha Kitt, Madonna, Kylie Minogue, or Gwen Stefani? I know Kylie Minogue was on Neighbors. I mean, which is I an Australian love soap, soap opera. Mm -hmm. I love Gwen Stefani. I thought it was the Jackson one. Didn't they do that? No, that's a different song. That's a different. What was the question? Eartha Kitt was an actress, right? It's yeah. who enjoyed... Yeah, so, which Santa Baby singer enjoyed a, a an additional career in the early 2000s in film and TV? Early 2000s. Early 2000s. When did The Emperor's New Groove come out? Ooh. Ooh. That was early Eartha 2000s. Eartha Kitt was Isma. Yeah, that was early 2000s, I think. Yeah. This is this film and TV? Uh, it says film and TV. Yep. We... We might be in Eartha Kitt territory. Yeah, no, I, I right. swear I, I'm leaning that way. But All right, you want to go Eartha Kitt? Sure. All right, yeah. that is correct. <laughs> Heck yeah. While Madonna Ooh. was in films through the 2000s, the to varying degrees of success, and Kylie Minogue was in several TV shows, Eartha Kitt portrayed Madame Zeroni in Holes in 2003. Oh, yeah. Yzma in Disney's Emperor New Groove. Kronk. In Kronk's New Groove and The Emperor's New School on TV from 2006 to 2008, for which she won two Emmys. She won a third <laughs> Emmy posthumously for her guest spot on Wonder Pets. No idea what that is. The last time she regularly <laughs> appeared on television prior to the 2000s was, she, when she, well, was when she played Catwoman in Adam West Batman TV series until Julie New, uh, Newmar left the show in 1967. Wow. So that's wild. Cool. Man. Uh, all right. Next question. What television show has won the most Emmys? The Simpsons, Game of Thrones, Saturday Night Live, or Succession? Most mm. Emmys. Do you know? No. I think it's The Simpsons. But the Simpsons and Saturday Night Live have been around for, forever. But yeah, I don't know but how many Emmys they've won. Also, Succession was, like, really big for us. Succession has not been around long enough, I don't think, right? Yeah. But I would go, I would go Simpsons. That would be my, my little guess. <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah. my, my gut, like, my initial reaction is also Simpsons, but yeah. then I'm like, did Game of Thrones just win, like, I think a it's, bajillion Emmys immediately? I yeah. think it's Game of Thrones, because I don't know that Simpsons has won recently-ish, yeah. right? Hmm. My my vote is for Game of Thrones. Okay. But. Anybody else want to no. wager a guess here and then come to a consensus? Game of Thrones. You want to go with Game of Thrones? Mm. Yeah, I, I, for the same rationale rational oh. that oh. Ashley presents, I, I <laughs> think <laughs> that Game of Thrones has like, no. cleaned oh, up. Yeah, I think they cleaned up a couple of years yeah. that, yeah. like, in all categories that they yeah, were nominated yeah. a couple of years. And I think that will overtake even though Simpsons and, and SNL and SNL have been around. Okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. All right, lock it in at Game of Thrones? Yeah. Wrong. Uh, it was Saturday Night Live. Yeah. The oh, Simpsons really? has a respectable oh. number of Emmy noms at 98, winning 35. Wow. Game of Thrones has been nominated 160 times, and they have won 59. 160? Yep. And Jeez. unbelievably, 12 of those were for the final season. <laughs> 12 is also the record for most wins in a single year, set and matched by Game of Thrones three separate years in a row, I guess. Or three separate years. Succession has the record for most nominations for a lead actor in a single series at three for, his, uh, for this most recent year. But Saturday Night Live has received... 305 nominations Whoa. and won 87 times wow. and has been wow. the has been by far the longest running show of the four for nearly 50 years running next year is snl's 50th anniversary so yeah wow. all right uh, i think you are two and two at this point i'm gonna say that's too many Emmys. yeah uh yeah. too many you should yet. get some of those back <laughs> here we go the matrix digital reigning code effect utilized throughout the series is actually derived for, for, from recipes for what? Sushi, ramen, what? dango, or yakitori. What? Yeah. Really? It's like kanji know, raining kanji. down. Well, yeah. But I, no, no, I, I, I think both of them were like, related to something specifically. That's amazing. 
Did we get the list again? Uh, is it sushi, ramen, dango, or yakitori? I'm leaning towards ramen. Just because yeah. I feel like that's... There's purpose. like a lot of different ingredients for ramen. There are so many different kinds of ramen. I feel yeah. like you could get a lot more variety there. Yeah. Not that there's not a lot of, that goes into the others, just... Yeah. I think ramen. All right. Anybody I'm not going to yeah, I'm picking up what Gary's put down, man. I don't have like a great reason for that. It's just maybe I'm hungry. Maybe that's mm. why. Ramen. Gonna go ramen? ramen? There are a lot really of different nice. types of sushi okay. and dango as well, but I don't think mm. the ingredients are as varied. Right. Yeah. And also, I want ramen. Now. That, I, Me right I now. figured that yeah. was the main that reason. That might that be the right. main yeah. reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I second All right. That. You're going to go ramen? Sure. Mm. Yeah. It is sushi. Dang it. Simon Whitley and Justin, Ooh. yeah, there we go. And Justin Marshall were the digital artists responsible for the now iconic digital rain effect. Whitley found inspiration from his wife's many cookbooks, lifting the uh, katakana directly from the cookbooks That's and cool, leaning actually. on Justin's digital skills to make the falling effect come to life. I was unable to determine how Japanese audiences reacted to the following code effect, but it is likely not much. Uh, likely not much was thought of it as the characters were jumbled and nothing intelligible could be derived from what you saw on screen. Uh, all right. Woo. What television show sports a staggering 3,278 original songs? These are not multiple choice questions. You got to guess. Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, original oh. songs. Oh, there's the Brigid, Brig, not Brigid Schmigadoon. That's a musical show. I, I don't think they... How many enough. songs? 3,000. 3,000? 3,278. That's a lot of music. Great, great, uh, great show, by the way. Yeah. So Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon. Yeah. Absolutely. Schmigadoon. Great show. You know what uh, show brings in musical guests all the time mm -hmm. is the Muppets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they do More covers and variations on their... That's actual really... regular songs. Oh, no. Oh, I, so I'm thinking Rubber Ducky, you're the one. <laughs> Some of these <laughs> things belong <laughs> together. Some of these things are not. I'm, I'm, I'm original thinking. Original songs for the show? Because if, it's, thinking, if they're bringing in guests, that's an original song for the guests. I'm thinking Sesame wrote a lot of good ones. I mean, yeah, I'm going to guess it's a show that's been around for a hot minute. Sesame's a good guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really good songs. Yeah. I, I think that's a solid guess. Actually. Rubber Ducky. All right. You want to go yeah, Sesame? I was Sesame. Sesame Street not too long ago. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you know, I'll miss you, but not really. Uh, Sesame Street is correct. Yeah. Woo! Sesame Street holds the record for the most original songs for any series in history. This isn't surprising given that Sesame Street has run for over 50 years and 4,764 episodes. You'll notice that this isn't exactly one-to-one -one, as several episodes repeated previous musical numbers like one, two, three, four, which is now definitely in your head. For the best ratio of original songs to episodes, movies, see Disney's, uh, what is this? Phineas and Ferb? Phineas. Phineas. Phineas, 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 Phineas and Ferb. Ferb at 350 songs in only 218 episodes Whoa. and movies. Wow. Oh, wow. That's a lot. All right. 3,000. I didn't know the music in Phineas and Ferb. Okay, truth be yeah. told, on my Barbie turntable, I had my first record was my Sesame Street's Greatest ah, Hits. Nice. nice. That's awesome. Oh, that's epic. Man. On your Barbie turntable. Sing, sing, sing a song, <laughs> sing it strong. Oh, yeah, I love it. I wonder if they're releasing new Barbie turntables now. Yeah, I hope so. There must be. I hope okay, because that Barbie turntable, I know that uh, the VST will find this. My Barbie turntable was a handheld, looked like a little briefcase. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. It was pink. It had the little uh, nub uh, for the like 45. Apple. I can no, remember. No, mine was oh. more oblong shaped. Mm. No, it was a, like a it, case it, no. It closed up like a total case with a really nice handle. Mm. I remember so you that could kind. you could carry your records and your turntable, and you could, could show you, up anywhere. Could you carry two turntables and a microphone? Two turntables and a microphone. How about that one, Kate? Oh, that one? No. 
Oh, it was no. all pink. It was more square. Everything mm. was pink. It was more rectangular. I guess there were a lot of Barbie turntables. Yeah. I'm sorry. All right, we got uh, four more questions here. <gasps> no! <gasps> oh, no! Oh, uh, the streak is gone. Somebody hit reset. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, On the good, okay. the good news, Carrie, though. Did Barbie? Oh, did what? Did Barbie get you? Come here. What are you? This? What? It's okay, Carrie. Megan, what did you do? <laughs> oh, no, 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 It's okay, my name's still on the bus drive, okay. so technically I crashed yeah. the bus. Oh, I can't believe I crashed. All okay, right. while you oh, start no. under the right bargain turntable, the hint is the record was much bigger than the machine. Yeah. So when you put it on, yeah, the record, yeah, the yeah, record yeah. overtook most of the yeah. machine. All right, what are you going to name the driver? Sweet Replace Sonic. <laughs> Apparently Sonic. Where are you All right, nine seconds left. Get donations in. Eight dollars and twelve cents or multiples thereof. I believe in you. Sonic or Sonic? We'll pull a, We'll pull the winner here in uh, after we get through the last couple questions here. Uh, how many? I think we've gotten Ooh, three right so far. Three. Okay, we're at three. The Barbie first. The crash. Ooh, Barbie. Yeah. Barbie, yeah. Barbie did cause the crash. Barbie is great. Oh, is it that one, Kate? Nope. nope. Don't worry. If it comes up, I will say. All that's right. That's the one. <laughs> all pink. All Spelled pink. Lord all right. Here. Barbie. Shocked for your. Uh... You stumped ass coo. I love yeah. it. <laughs> I've right. never seen it. Here we go. The first words uttered on MTV were, "Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll." What was playing as these words were spoken? Oh. Rock and roll. <laughs> no. uh... <laughs> On MTV, you said? Yeah, on MTV, That's the, the first one, words right? no. uttered oh. on MTV, not the first music video. That's not what they're asking, because that is a that's a well-known uh, yeah. fact. This is the first word spoken. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. What was playing in the back, like what was playing on the actual TV when that was said? Video killed the radio star. <laughs> Ashley, what are you doing? I'm playing Buzz Bombers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that... That was the first music video. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah you're good. Yeah. That they played. So. Uh, Anybody have a guess? You know, that was a little before my time. <laughs> I, will, I will admit. Was it a black screen? <laughs> uh, no, it was not a black screen. Uh, moon landing. No, but you're on the right track. Oh, was it just like the Moon Man logo? No. Like, oh, was it the first per picture of Earth? No. <laughs> All right, that's enough guesses. It was uh, it, what's up? Was it the astronaut with the flag that changed all that color? It was not. It was the 81 launch of the Columbia Space Shuttle. Co-founder ja John Lack uttered the words, believing the launch to be as momentous as the first launch of the reusable space shuttle. So just two years prior, John claimed that the video radio was going to be a game changer. The space theme would continue with an attempt to use Neil Armstrong's moon landing words, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, but Neil stopped it with threats of suit. The moon man iconography was a silhouette of Buzz, uh, of which Aldrin did give permission for. Did give permission for, sorry did give permission for. All right, next question here. 35 years before Barbenheimer, Studio Ghibli released two films as a double feature, possibly traumatizing an entire generation. What were the two films it released together? Mm, oh, so together, yeah. Wasn't it like The Exorcist? Yeah, that's what and, I'm, and Damien. And, and Studio Ghibli? Studio Ghibli, yeah, yeah. no. No, yeah. The people who do the... So Studio what's a Ghibli? really... Like Studio Howl's Ghibli. Moving, yeah. Howl's Moving Castle. Okay. Like, the one with the mask. Together. Yes, the one... I mean... Yeah. All I can think of is the fruit candy. The, the fruit candy? Oh, Grave of the Fireflies? Yes. Yeah. Mm. If we were talking about traumatizing people, Grave yeah. of the Fireflies might be one of them. 100%. Yeah. And but what's, what's a really kitty movie to pair it with? To have all the children first come in oh, for yeah. that Lull one into a and false then sense get of security traumatized. And then hit them with Grave of the Fireflies? Yeah. Slap it on, maybe? Like one of the older Ghibli ones. When was Totoro released? Oh, my neighbor Totoro's pretty Totoro cool. is a kitty one, yeah. Yeah. Like I'm a very childish one. Mm. Most of the other ones I'm thinking of are much more recent. I'm also assuming that these are like Ghibli films, not just Ghibli. Like, yeah. it's a yep. clearing house of. Yeah. Yeah. I think sure. Totoro and Grave of Fireflies. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
parents, which would be a horrible. Why would you pair those together? Yeah. I don't know, because that's what they did. Really? Seriously? <laughs> wow. Wow. Released is uh, being billed as a double feature. Japanese audience is lined up April 16th in 1988 to watch both <laughs> these films back to back in theater. Does it say which was first? Because that's <laughs> whether or not you got to the end of the double feature was on the hot of on the high note of Totoro came down to the theater you saw okay. films at. As some decided to show Totoro first, while others opted oh. to show Grave of Fireflies first. Oh, so it was man. not nice. actually, yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's a bad idea. That's oh. terrible. My Neighbor Totoro is such an amazing, like, piece of childhood. And Grave of Fireflies is such a horrific piece of childhood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. You got that one right, though, so congrats. Next question. We got two more here. You've got four right, I believe. What film contains the first fully CGI sequence in a feature film? Oh, oh, oh. Sherlock Holmes. Anybody else want to take a stab? Carrie seemed very confident, so... I yeah. could be... Okay, it's either Sherlock Holmes or maybe that one with um, the deep sea water thingy that's doing this. Oh, that's the, is, that's the abyss. The that's the abyss. From Sherlock Holmes or the water thingy from the abyss, and I don't remember which. But I think it's Sherlock Holmes. Is it yeah. Howard the Duck? Sorry, I was just being smart. I'll pass it as an animation. <laughs> I could be totally wrong, though, because I'm not the animator. <laughs> You want a photo frame? Yeah, but we won't. Hit your husband on the phone. It's 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> no. It's a totally CG. It will be a I scene. Oh, wait. Scene or character? Yeah. Uh, scene. Scene. Sequence. It's sequence. sequence. That's not a... Sequence. That's Fully not a character. That's CGI not a sequence definition. in a feature film. I no longer am confident because I don't know what how you define sequence. <laughs> well, what's like what about the, Tron? Like, like yeah, um, like Tron or Tron. like something in space, something that you can't do practical yeah, effects Tr with. Tron, Tron, Tron is a strong guess, actually. It wasn't Tron mostly rotoscoping. But I mean, was there CG? CGI. I mean, the, I guess the the like digitizing him yeah. into the the thing was probably wasn't. Uh, also, like the the light cycles. Yeah. All right, yeah, somebody. You're gonna Throw make that guess. You're yeah. gonna say Tron. Sure. Sure. Nope. No. <laughs> the answer is right? the answer is no. The answer is Star Trek II: Wrath of Khan. What? The Genesis effect sequence from Wrath of Khan was put together huh. by Lucasfilm's computer division, oh. many employees of which had worked on Star Wars. Later on, the entire computer division of Lucasfilm would be purchased by George Lucas by Steve Jobs. Yes, that's Steve Jobs. What other Steve Jobs is there? And thus, Pixar Studios was founded. Yep. Okay, I should have. So, oh, yeah. Wrath of Khan. All right, last question. Which horror film had an English and Spanish version in production simultaneously? I'm the Barbie. Now. This is a. This is a. Tr I, that would be. This is a hard one. Wait, which one? Isn't it Dracula? Which horror film had an English and Spanish version in production simultaneously? Pretty sure it's Dracula. I'm like pretty sure. I don't know if it was Spanish, but you want mm -hmm. you can lock that in. I lock it in. All right, let's just go with it. You're right. Yeah. Well, good yeah. job. Well done. So, yeah. 1931, both versions of the film were produced at the same time using the same sets and screenplay, but with different actors and altered costuming. The English version would shoot during the day, with the Spanish version taking the stage at night. Most critics agree the Spanish version is overall the better film and sticks closer to the screenplay than the English version. With some changes, its runtime is almost nearly 30 minutes longer. Nice. Okay, why did you know that when none of us had any idea? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I watched like one video essay one time, and it was <laughs> uh, yeah. answer is YouTube. Kodatsky, is thank YouTube. you so much for the uh, for the quiz. I think we got five right. That sounds about right. I think we got yeah, five ten. of ten. So, twenty-five dollars, please. Money, please. Money, please. Everybody <laughs> else can also donate $25 if they would like. Completed. Yay! Okay. 